you pay your people before you and begin at the bottom and work your way up. Let the guy who earns 200,000, 300,000 be paid first before you pay the top managers who get the top money. Build that culture of showing that you are a father to the business and or a mother to the business and you will succeed. So I ask you, what kind of bird are you? Because everybody is a bird of some kind. If you want to be an ego, an ego soars. The word is you soar high. And your vision is fantastic. You see something, however far it is, and you come straight down at a supersonic speed. Pick up what you want and you go away. You're a targeted worker. You're not going to just fly around like a carol. You know what they call this one? Yeah. Maribu stock. It looks for something that's dead. It can't even hunt on its own. This one has died. Let's go all of us and share it. The ego stays alone or beyond the ego. So don't mix with them. So choose your friends carefully. Choose your company. There are too many negative people telling you you can't do it. You can do it. All of you, God gave you a gift, potential in you, but you've not unlocked it. I am confident all of you here must be able to make what? A million dollars if you chose to do it in 10 years. 10 years to make a million dollars is not impossible. It's focus. The fact that you are here in this room, you, choose, you chose to come and spend a day here, means there's something in you that is almost divine. You have been put in a different path. The question is, will you stay on that path to succeed? You need the right partners in life, not just in business. If you have a husband who's going to bring you down, the sooner you draw the lines, the better. Because the husband can bring you down. Children who are a nuisance every day, all your money, bring him out of prison, going here. They are being a nuisance. You've got to be able to cut the string. Also us, for men, if you have a wife who's going to be on your head all the time, you can't work. You need someone who will support you. Someone has got to do this role, you do this role, and you succeed. So choosing the right partner is important. Don't just go on impulse or emotion. There's a very narrow line between success and failure. Especially in business. You think you are succeeding every single day, yet you don't know you are actually right on the edge of failure until the day when you fall off. Failure comes at any time. I have learned more from my mistakes, my failures, than what my successes are. Most of the time people are talking about, oh, he's done this, he's done this, you've succeeded. They don't know how many times I have failed and how many times I have failed and had to get myself up. And the quicker you get up, the better. You need to be resilient. You need to be strong. And accept to learn from failure. Better learn from other people's mistakes than your own mistakes but also do not miss the lesson when you fall and you make a fail. You've got to learn and embrace that. Thing. So, what is the most significant time in your life? Many people think it's the day you are born. That's the most significant day. What is the most important day to you if I asked you? Some people think, oh no, the day I started going to school. Some people think it's the day I graduated. Some people think it's the day I got married. The day I had a child. The day I, the day I became a grandfather. Or is it the day you died? What is the most significant day in your life? You are born, let's say, in 1984. And you are going to live, let's say, to 100 years. You are going to die in 2084. We call the gap in between that the dash. What did you do with the dash in your life? That time between your birth and death. It's called the dash. What did you do with your dash? The day you know your purpose in life, then you know that's your dash. My calling was to do this. These early years of school, learning, everything, dating, marrying, there are things along the way. You need to know your purpose in life, your calling, and make that your focus, and make sure you accomplish it. Set small goals to achieve your big goal. The most important day is the day you realize your dash. Some people realize their dash when they're 18, others when they're 60. So it's not a race when you get it, but understand that you need to understand your dash. We need to provide continuous mentorship. That mentorship doesn't stop that. Now I've made it, let's go away. Keep your mentors. In Japan, they have a word called Kaizen. Kaizen is continuous improvement. Toyota began as a, a, a factory to make clothes. They kept improving slowly. Then they made the machines. Then they started making parts for cars. Now they are making cars. Now they are number one in the world in car sales. Kaizen, continuous improvement. You need to invest in small business owners. You are the heart of the economy. If we're going to have social economic transformation, the government, the people, all of us need to support the small businesses. We need to encourage girls in schools. Okay, let's go. Attitude. It's so important, and only one person I think talked about attitude. If you don't change your attitude, you cannot change your thinking. If you don't change your thinking, you cannot change your behavior. Let today be a day we have put a, a spear in the ground. Your attitude has changed. Your attitude has changed. Once your attitude changes, your thinking will change. You're always going to be thinking business. You're dealing with children, and women are much better at multitasking. You deal with the children, you deal with the husband, you deal with the things you've got to deal with, but your mind can be also on your business. 
and you are more careful. You are risk averse. Don't be too risk averse. You have to take risks to succeed. But you can change by changing your attitude and changing your behavior. There's no point in changing your behavior and your attitude and then you don't do something different. You need to do things differently. We start businesses, in the first year we give up. Or the second year, or the third year. Very few make it to five years. Because you do not go the distance. You must be determined to go the distance. And now, it's about the environment. You need to go green. This issue, especially in northern Uganda, is hurting you. You're cutting all the trees for charcoal. It's easy. Maybe it's not you, but your relative, your neighbor, your son, your friend, we've got to stop that. I know there's a problem because we don't have an alternative right now. And that's something we've got to address with the government at the highest level. Because we are cutting trees with a fast-growing population faster than they can grow. And eventually, we shall all suffer and pay the price. So as I end, we need lower cost of capital. And this address I address to UDB and Post Bank. Please, be humane. We all want to make profit. We need to lend to women at a lower rate than you're lending to seasoned men. When I go into a bank like this bank, they'll lend me money at a particular rate. But there should be a preferential rate for women. If that can be government policy somewhere, then women will have access. They'll abuse it, some of them, but eventually it will stabilize and it will empower women. But you cannot borrow unless you have the discipline of saving. You must first save money. Saving is a pre-condition to, to, uh, to getting a loan. How you save money, you show it. How you spend money, there's a pattern, then they'll lend you money. Don't be scared to borrow. I've been borrowing money for a long time. Some people say, but mm, aren't you the one who the other day we were reading the newspaper? You borrowed $10 million and you struggled to pay? Yes, I borrowed $40 million, I borrowed $50 million, and I've always paid it back. When I borrowed $10 million and someone said, no, now I want 35, I said, no, 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 you can't take 35. Let's sit down and talk. They didn't want to talk. We have a disagreement. Yes, a dispute has arisen. You go to the courts. Don't be bullied. We've been bullied, like I told you, by these people for a long time, the people with the capital. And we've had a chain in our neck. But now, we must sit down and negotiate. Because we went to school. You negotiate an agreed rate, but you do, and you settle. So, don't be scared. Are we done? Lastly, we must celebrate an accomplishment by a woman. Building a monumental thing like this in Arua. If she tells me, come to Arua, you come. I think. But you have clapped. Really, to put up a building like this, set your goals quickly. Set your goals, but don't be pressurized. Rather than spending time on things that don't make you grow, because too many people spend too much time on things that don't make them grow. Whether it's watching TV, watching football, don't spend time on it. You want to become, invest your energy on working, on working to reach your goals, but don't feel pressurized to allow yourself too many failures. You get that? Set your goals. Number two, learn to be self-reliant. Growing up, you may have been dependent on your parents or your siblings or your friends and other people around you. And they might undeniably make your life easier. But in reality, not everyone will be there for someone forever. Each of us has to deal with our own battles and even you have to learn how to overcome them alone. It makes you stronger when you are prepared to deal with life as it comes at you. So please, learn to be, what's the word? Self-reliant. Learn self-control. Learn to control your emotions. And you women are very emotional. Control your emotions, your actions, your temper. Learn to reflect, evaluate, and analyze the end, of where, the end game before it begins. You begin something with somebody, how will it end? Never let your emotions overpower your intelligence, because all of you are intelligent. Develop acceptance. Understand that you can never control everything. When you face a loved one's death, or rejection, or failure, or heartbreak, learn to quickly move forward. Pick yourself up. The first step is that you have to accept it. Too many people go into denial. Be contented and refrain from complaining. People complain and complain and complain. What does it help you? If it helps you, okay, go and complain. But it won't help you. So I don't know why so many people complain so much. So, our sponsors, we are really grateful for all the people sponsoring this event. Number six, quit being envious. Find joy in other people. Be happy for the people who have succeeded before you. Celebrate them. Talk about them positively. Don't be envious. You need to have a sense of humor. I've lost so many times. I've had incidents where I lose so much money, but instead of being angry and envious, I'm always happy to celebrate them. And that changed my attitude. It uplifted me. 
Avoid negatives because there are so many negative things in life. Surround yourself with positive people. Those people who are negative, avoid them. Condition your mind with positive thoughts. Engage yourself in positive environment and eliminate anything that does not contribute to a positive effect. Being positive, that word is so powerful. Be positive. Build your self-confidence. Accept and love yourself. If you don't love yourself, how do you love other people? So you need to have that inner confidence. It's the first step to building confidence. Go out of your comfort zone. You will never know when confidence, where your confidence will take you. I don't know if some of you have seen Honor Banita's children. They have confidence like no other. They come to you, they walk into a place, you think they own the place. They came to my hotel and they yeah, are you Mr. Peter Ture? Yeah, very good. How are you? Yeah, I like your hotel. It's nice, it's nice. You know, that confidence, a six-year-old girl telling you that. That's confidence. Now, all of you can do that. Raise your children with confidence. But if you're beating them every time they do something, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. You become like this and you never do it. So you've got to... What is deserved for our keynote? Speaker, Dr. Patrick Vitature. Wow. Sitting with his students.